had a teacher who said that I was taking up a good man's space when I was in school. He said, all you're going to do is get pregnant, have a child, and a good man could have been in that seat. I didn't want to go back to Philadelphia because they're going to see me and I'm pregnant and I'm not going to be an artist and, and this is going to happen and exactly. And then I said, what? I had to recognize that I was falling right into a trap of being somebody's othered um, stereotype. So I created this piece that says, a woman taking a space from a good man and then the accusation, you took a space from a good man. And then I made a space from a good man. So I flipped the, yes. the image by saying I, I made a space for a good man. The family piece seems to come up a lot in your work. Mm -hmm. And you've shared some family images here with us today. Can you talk about the influence of family photography? We were a close, close family for my mother had 13 brothers and sisters. My father had 10 brothers and sisters. So. I had 50 first cousins growing up, so it was all of us all the time. We had fun. We did everything. We didn't need, quote, friendships outside. My father loved the everyday aspect of taking photographs. He photographed us in, in, in many on many occasions. Just looking at my mother, looking at me so adoringly, you know, that it just really, I saw that image, I said, wow, you know, mom, this is just, so moving for me to see that and I had no idea what that meant to her. Growing up in, in her beauty shop, there were a lot of rules, but there was also a lot of listening to stories. And and I love, you know, listening to women and about relationships, but I didn't know what they were talking about, but they all were supporting each other. I uh, did not have any uh, black photographers in my history books and I knew based on growing up in a beauty shop in my mother's house that there was Gordon Parks, there was Roy Tigarava, you know, and then there was my father's cousin who had a studio down the street and a black photojournalist, uh, Jack Franklin, who photographed during the uh, civil rights movement um, and very active in Philadelphia. So I knew that their stories were somewhere. not realize until you contacted me that it's 25 years since picturing us, which I had no idea that it just, just seems like yesterday. I remember it so well. It was the outline for me, yeah. you know, um, and I like the idea of the roadmap because I think that that was the beginning for me to think about how I could move forward in images from images of writing about dolls to think about writing about family history memory. I met through the six years of creating Black Portraitures so many younger scholars um, who are writing about images and recycling some of the old stories but new stories are developing and and they are visionaries I think that that's the next step but we need to find a place for these voices that's something I want to create something not only as an archive but also a place where other scholars can read about images from the diaspora um, about um, about black people collaboration is a central way for me to continue working um, with intergenerational aspects of it. And that's something that I, I, I think is really central. Deb loves joy, as you know. Mm -hmm. There's some difficult moments in our lives that we can't ignore, but we need to find ways to tell stories about survival, about resistance, about resilience. Thank you. Thank you.